Today we're going to read from the Gospel of John on the fifth Sunday of Lent. This is from the Cycle A readings. Uh, this is the reading that goes along with the scrutinies. The scrutinies are part of the preparation for those who are coming into the church through baptism this year. This reading is specially chosen to help them to reflect and to go deeper into their own lives and in that discernment of coming into the church, of being baptized in Christ. I'm going to read a shortened version of the gospel. This is the story of Jesus receiving a message that his friend Lazarus is sick. His friend Lazarus dies before Jesus arrives. And Lazarus's two sisters, who we've heard of before, are Martha and Mary. And they greet Jesus when he comes. So as we enter into the story today, Enter in to one of the characters in the story. Enter in as an observer. Enter in as Jesus. Or recognize yourself in the characters as we read, as we reflect. Where do you enter into this story? Where do you see yourself? Where does God see you? And so we will begin, and again, we will be reading a shortened version of the reading for today. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. So imagine this part of the story. Jesus has just received word that his friend Lazarus is ill. Yet Jesus does not seem in a hurry to get back to Martha and Mary and Lazarus. Instead, he stays two more days before he begins that journey. But he also says, this illness is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Imagine yourself in this story. Imagine yourself as part, part of the story, whether you are with Jesus as he makes this statement as he knows about his friend's illness yet chooses not to return yet? Or are you with Mary and Martha and watching them as they witness their brother's illness and death? Sit with both sides of this story. Then after the two days, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the, to in the tomb four days. 
When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Sit for a moment with this conversation between Jesus and Martha. Again, where are you in this story? Are you observing? Are you seeing this? Are you Martha? Are you Jesus? But no matter who you are, as you are looking at this, and you recognize Martha's belief, Martha's understanding. She knows who he is. Can I speak with such confidence? Do I know Jesus as intimately as Martha does? to know and trust who he is and what he is able to do in my life, in the life of those I love. We often condemn Martha from an earlier story that we read in the Gospels where Martha is bothered by her sister Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha is doing all the work. And that's a whole nother contemplation. But that is usually how we see Martha. This story, this story of Martha saying, yes, Lord, I do believe. And I know that my brother will rise. Do we have that faith? Do I believe? When Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Again, enter in. This is a time of of significant grieving. The Jews are grieving. Mary is grieving. Grieving is, is such a natural, yet very difficult time in life. Be with Mary and the Jews as they grieve, as they weep over the loss of their friend, their brother. And as they take Jesus to the place where he is buried.
Jesus began to weep. Let us just sit for a moment with this Jesus who is weeping, who is grieving, who is so saddened by this death, by this loss. He is so moved by the grief of others. Let us sit with Jesus as he weeps. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Take a moment to witness what is happening outside of the tomb to witness this conversation again between Martha and, Ma and Jesus. To witness the, the practical things of life. Lord, there, there's going to be a stench. He's been in there for four days. He's dead, he's gone. Yet Jesus responding to believe, to believe that they would see the glory of God. Where am I at in that conversation? Do I believe in the glory of God? Or do I focus so much on the things I know, the things I trust, the stench that will be in there? the dead body. Before we move on to the rest of the gospel, I want to take a moment also to look at this story from inside the tomb. I've recently done some Visio Divina, some seeing the word, using an image from the St. John's Bible of Lazarus sitting in the tomb looking out. 
take a moment to look from that perspective. You are Lazarus. You are in the tomb. You have been dead. Physically, spiritually, mentally. In whatever way that maybe you can relate to at the moment. And here, here the stone is being rolled away and you are being called. You are being called to come out. Come out of that darkness that you have been in. Come out from the things that have entombed you. As I contemplate this, I think of the times in my life where darkness has surrounded me. And there's a comfort in that darkness yet in knowing this isn't where I want to be. When we are called to come forth, when we are called to come out of that darkness, that spiritual, emotional darkness, how do you respond? How, how do I come out of that darkness? The dead man came out. His feet and hands were bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped with the cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Take just a moment to think about what are the things that bind you? What are the things that bind your feet and your hands and your, your mind or your head? And what does it feel like to be unbound? Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had been and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. For a moment, just reflect on, on our belief in Jesus. The things that we have witnessed in our own life, in the life of those around us. How do those bring me to a greater belief? As we witness Jesus in our daily lives. And so good and gracious God, be with us today as we contemplate this reading. As we contemplate this story of Jesus' friend Lazarus who dies, who is entombed, who is taken into the darkness, who is bound. Be with us as we contemplate that coming out of the darkness, that coming into the light of not being bound or entombed by the things that hold us back from you, but to allow us to come up, to come, and to 
meet you to come into the light. But also let us contemplate that conversation with Jesus and Martha. The belief that Martha has in her friend Jesus. God, give my heart the desire to have that relationship, to believe so strongly in knowing who Jesus is in my life and what he can do in my life. The way he can rise or bring to life the things that I thought were dead within me. The knowing and trusting in your son. And God, Mary wept, Mary cried and was hurting, and so were the Jews. This death was difficult for them. Help me to remember how Jesus is moved to compassion. That Jesus weeps with us. When we hurt, Jesus hurts. He has compassion. And he knows those human feelings. And so, good and gracious God, open our hearts today. Open our hearts to recognizing, like Mary, the grief that fills us at times and allowing ourselves to experience that, to live that human emotion, to share that with others. Help us to remember also the belief that Martha had in Jesus, the belief that her brother would rise. And help us to also realize that even when we are entombed and bound and sitting in darkness, we can come forth into the light. And so good and gracious God, put on our hearts the desires that you wish for each one of us. Lord, be with me as I travel my day and help me to move and to be in the places that you call me to. Be with me throughout my day. Amen.